Morning, Tom. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? And not too bad. And apart from the fact it's raining uh, after all the uh, heat we've had, um, yeah, <laughs> other than that, doing fine, thanks. <laughs> I can't moan about that. Um, I wanted to talk to you, and hopefully it's a subject that I think other people will find useless. Uh, useless? Useful. <laughs> I have, I've been noticing lately that um, a lot of my property owners, their portfolios are getting sizable. And sometimes from an insurance perspective, it can be really beneficial to put them all on one policy. And that can effectively save the client a lot of money and a lot of hassle, one renewal date. But then I'm finding that the, the properties can be very, very different. And that means that insurers then won't look at them on a portfolio basis. And we end up with policies all over the place because one might be student let, one might be private let. But I'm finding that these portfolios are getting bigger and bigger and I see them from all sorts of different perspectives that they're owned by a family group, they're joint owned, they're owned by a limited company. What are the implications of that Tom for the individual? In, in terms of tax planning, what, what are we looking at in terms of these property portfolios and how they buy them and the best way to do that? That's a, a, almost a how long is a piece of string and we could be here for several hours on this one. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll go through some of the major issues that people find because um, I've been dealing with succession planning um, for by client landlords for a number of years now and to be honest you see the same pattern repeating again and again. People tend to love property because they love property and then they get to a point where they go, actually, now I want to pass it on to the children and we've got huge capital gains tax liabilities. I've got huge inheritance tax liabilities. Never mind the problem, as you mentioned, that they've got various different property types that give them yeah. issues on, on, on that front. Um, a number of years ago, we went through a period where lots and lots of buy to let landlords were creating limited companies and then didn't know what to do with them. They just heard it was great from a tax point of view. And to be fair, it is, because if you think about it, if you own a property or you're in a portfolio in your own name and you're getting a sizable income, and let's face it, you know, we could be talking three, four, five hundred thousand pounds income coming from the rents. Yep. That's one hell of a lot of personal income tax that gets hit. If it's in a company, then it's corporation tax, which is 19% compared to potentially 40 or 45% on an individual basis. That's the first part. The second part is really when you're looking longer down the line, because for inheritance tax purposes, residential property has no exemption. So it means if you've got a portfolio of two, three, four million pounds, you're going to end up being taxed or your family are going to end up paying tax on that three, four, five million pounds, whatever the property portfolio is at the time. If you've held them for a long time and you try and sell them, then you've got capital gains tax issues. And I've come across um, various people who sell a property a year, pay the capital gains tax, et cetera, et cetera, and they've got 30 or 40 properties. So it's one hell of a long time to go to get rid of these properties. Plus you're paying tax that you may be able to mitigate in a perfectly legal, legitimate way. So let's talk limited companies and how we can utilize them. First of all, if you've got a, the right number of properties, that's a property business, even if it's you as a sole trader. You can actually, and HRC will still give guidance on this, you can look at moving all the properties in one go into the limited company. I know there were issues about having a mortgage against those properties, but there are ways and means of of managing the way you do it. Um, nice. So you can either transfer them in or you can sell them into the limited company. That means then from an income tax point of view, you're probably in a better position. And HMRC are quite happy because then your company's house, they know what you've got, you've got to report everything. So actually they, they, they quite like that from that point of view. The other thing that um, a limited company can do that very few people actually look at is it's a great way of passing those assets on to your children because you can potentially make them shareholders so you can give them a small sliver one or two percent which pays dividends which particularly if they're going to the university great way of getting income to them in a tax efficient manner using their uh, dividend allowance or using their paye allowance 
But the other thing you can do is you can actually pass those assets on to them using um, inheritance tax friendly approaches. So you can actually put their shares into trust. So mum and dad still have control. They can still make all the decisions. They effectively have a B share underneath that the kids are, are named in, but it's owned by the trust, not by the kids. The advantage of that really is, let's face it, we know our children are going to pick the wrong ones to, to marry, to live with, to be with. And also when you get an inheritance, that tends to be the point when your partner goes, I don't actually like you that much, but now I can afford to leave you. Yay, and I'm off. <laughs> um, apologies, this is, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting cynical as I get older, as you can tell by the gray hair. Um, but that's a great way then of protecting those assets for the kids, passing them on. And you can also do it in a way where, as long as it's done properly, you let HMRC know what's going on, but you can actually use those shares to minimize your estate and reduce potential inheritance tax when you pass away. But the key thing is do it sooner rather than later. So if you're in your thirties and forties and you're thinking of creating a property portfolio, think about it with the end in mind. Yeah, the advice to... I think I need to be giving my clients is when they buy a property, they'll automatically think, right, I've got to insure it. But really, I should be saying to them, well, have you thought about how you've bought these properties and what you intend to do them? Because the earlier you do it then, the easier it makes it later on. Absolutely, it, it's like everything. Plan, in, plan for the end in mind and everything then falls into place. And people do worry about the loan rates and getting mortgages through limited companies. Um, I have to point out, don't do mortgages myself. I personally find them very, very boring. Don't want to get involved, but we have people who do them. You might pay an extra half to 1% apparently at the moment, but A, it's easier because the company can own 10 properties and the mortgage lenders will look at 10 properties rather than going, you want to buy a new property, just one property on its own. So you may pay a little bit more in interest, but don't forget in a limited company, that can offset your corporation tax bill at the end of the year. And also actually the tax savings you can potentially make through your income tax, dividend payments, all that kind of thing is 1% a real deal breaker, particularly when it's a great way of building a family business that can be passed on to the generations as long as you trust your kids to do a decent job. So what you're saying is at the point that you think, right, I'm going to buy this property, I'll make sure I get my insurance and my mortgage in place. At that stage, you really need to be thinking about how that property is owned and what will happen in the future. I would actually argue and say, do it before you start yeah. thinking, because yeah. you know what it's like, you've seen the house, you get everything lined up, and then at the last minute, Tom Buck comes on and says, right, let's talk about this way of doing it. And I can and guarantee, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, mess it, I'll mess it up for you if, you, if I'm there too late. Um, whereas for one client at the moment, we've actually set up a corporate structure got the money in, he's got getting the mortgage lending sorting out and he's doing it all through a limited company because he sees it as a long-term business. He's 32, 33, I think off the top of my head. He's looking at this as a 40 or 50 year investment and business, something he can grow. So actually we set everything up beforehand, then got the mortgage broker involved, then got the property, then we'll get the insurance and to be honest, it will just flow beautifully for him. So how wonderful it is that you can buy those properties. It's absolutely key that before you do, you consider what your outcome, what your end goal of them is. Absolutely. Perfect. Tom, that's really clarified and I hope that's helped anybody else who's thinking about buying more properties or even starting to buy properties. Thank you ever so much, Tom, and I'll speak to you again soon. All right, Joe, take care now.